Good afternoon. It is Wednesday, January 5th, the first technical discussion of the new year, Brian. And uh, we've only been trading a few days of the 2020 year, but man, the volatility is high in the charts. I tell you what, the difference between what they looked at on Monday's close to Tuesday's close to Wednesday's close, uh, kind of eye-opening and kind of very uh, volatile. I guess the question everyone's asking is, what do you see after the first three days of this choppy trade action? Yeah, Jim, uh, you know, if you would have told me on uh, Monday after the way we had closed that we would have the type of day that we had yesterday, um, you know, there really was not any kind of a signal um, that uh, the, the type of buying yesterday would, would come in the way it did. And um, as a matter of fact, uh, I would say that the, uh, the bar that we had on, on corn, for example, on, on Monday was very negative. Uh, but let's take a look at kind of what we did and, and how it's all evolved. Um, you know, we had we had talked about this bar uh, last week, and this is where we had made the high for the move so far. Uh, that was an outside day lower, meaning that we traded above the previous day's highs initially. And then by the end of the day, we had closed below the previous day's low. And, and our concern was that that would be a, a negative type of a signal to lead to, to some additional losses. Uh, our thought was that we would maybe go down and, recheck that 590 area, uh, which is where, uh, and I'll pull this chart up next, but where we had had a, a lot of, of good uh, resistance on the uh, daily continuous chart, thinking that now having gotten through that, that that would be support. So it looks like uh, what we did on Monday was another outside day lower. Uh, in the night session, we were up you know, about a dime and then closed below the previous day's low the very next day uh, or the, that same day. And uh, again, that would have led me to believe that uh, we would see some additional selling or some kind of follow through, uh, but that was not the case. We had actually opened a little bit higher yesterday and uh, opened really right at the, uh, the low price of the session and saw nothing but buying. Um, now, interestingly, you know, we have watched this long term downtrend and uh, we respected it for quite some time until about mid-December. Once we got through it uh, and, and closed above it, we came back down and rechecked it, and then away we went up into the highs. Uh, and, and that low that we had on uh, on Monday was right at that trend line. Um, so we went down, we, we kind of hit it from above, and we did close off the lows a little bit, but still was a, a negative close. Um, but let's take a look at the uh, the daily continuous. I think this is actually maybe the, the most uh, useful chart right now. Um, and so we had said, yes, uh, this, this 590 area, you've got the 200 day right there. Um, the uptrend that would be in place from your November low to your late November low. And this was when we had the uh, aggressive selling after discovering the new variant Omicron. So a lot of, of macroeconomic type selling pressure uh, for that specific event. And so that low on Monday was actually right up against that uptrend line. So that's this green line right here. Um, and we are seeing some, uh, I, would, I would say maybe a little bit of a short-term downtrend. I just drew that from last week's high to yesterday's high. So um, the, uh, the high for today's session was right against that trend line. So this market may need to consolidate in this vicinity. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, if we're looking at buying dips and we're still looking at the 200 day on the daily continuous is at 94, the 20 days at 96, and uh, this uptrend will come in uh, most likely right around the uh, uh, 90, 91 ish area. So uh, if we do see yesterday's uh, gains given right back, which is, is definitely possible. Uh, I think we'll we'll see this thing down another uh, 10, 12 cents, uh, and and get right back into this vicinity and recheck the support. Um, market may just need to consolidate a little bit as we go into the report next Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be a very important report. There's uh, uh, numerous uh, different sets of data that will be released, and so I, I would expect that you're going to see a, a a lot of volatility from the report as uh, the computers digest the production numbers and then the uh, carryout numbers and, and um, quarterly stocks. This will all be released all at one time. Uh, now, I'm looking at this old low from July, and this was a 619 and a half low. 
I think that's why we're going to start. We're going to have a, a little bit of a struggle here. The high that we had uh, last week was 617 and three quarters. And then if we look at that basis, the March chart, the high that was made during the month of July was 616 and a half. So we did jab through it by about a penny, but then we had that reversal. Uh, so this is going to be some some good strong resistance at this 620 area. If we can come up and make some new highs above this high, uh, then really we're looking at the potential to uh, test our June monthly high, which was 633, and the uh, the previous contract high or the current contract high of 640 and a half. So um, I would say in the in the short term, uh, let's just maybe revise this trend line to the uh, the low that was made in in late November to yesterday's low. And again, that'll come in, uh, you know, really in this 590 area. So I would suggest that uh, in, in the short term, if we do see today's lows given out, uh, so if we see selling immediately tonight and we're back below six bucks, uh, we're likely to come right back down into this, into this vicinity. Um, in the big picture, if this is just a consolidative pattern and we end up taking out this downtrend, uh, then I would expect that we're going to break through this 620 area, um, and uh, uh, ultimately, in the in the big picture, and this could be another contract down the road. But I still wonder if if at some point we don't come down and uh, or go up and and fill what would be this large uh, gap on the daily basis. This is when the July contract uh, had expired, and then the September contract became the front month. Uh, now, that might be something that's reserved for our own domestic weather market down the road, and maybe that's on the May contract or the July contract, uh, but uh, that does still look like a, a viable target to me in the, in the biggest of pictures. Um, let's take a look at this on a, on a weekly continuous. Um, so I just want to illustrate that that gap is, is not there uh, on the weekly or the monthly. That is only there when you look at it on a, on a daily basis. Uh, and that was, again, from the expiration of one contract to the next. Uh, now, it does appear to me that on a, on a weekly continuous, we are in an upward trending channel. Um, this would be the, uh, the channel would be drawn using the uh, low that was made in August to the low that was made in October. And then using the channel tool, we would just uh, place that uh, that overhead channel line uh, at, at the uh, the high here. And actually, I had it drawn off this low. Um, put it right here. Um, it looks like last week's high was right at the upper end of that channel. So, um, you know, we could still stay. Most of the trade recently has been in the upper half of this channel. So all of these weekly highs and lows have really been respecting the upper portion of this channel. Um, if we do break down below here and work our way down to the lower end of the channel, we have to realize that's down around the 560 area. Um, and so if, if this market gets tired up here and needs to go back down and recheck the low end here, and, and that might be driven by whatever the data on the USDA report is, if it's not bullish, uh, then I would suggest that we're probably going to go take a look at this 560 vicinity and have another 40 cents of downside. Uh, now, over the next few weeks, you're going to have this kind of longer term downtrend coincide with the upper end of the channel uh, in that 630 area. And um, 630 would also, 631 and a half to be exact, would represent the 50% retracement of the move. And this is from the, the highs that we had in May of 2021 down to the, the fall lows in September of 2021. Um, so having this convergence uh, at, at the upper end of the channel, the downtrend, 50% retracement. And again, that also does line up with a, a test of this uh, this June monthly high. So uh, again, I, I do think if we can get a friendly report, we will start looking at these previous monthly highs, but so far we're respecting the July monthly high at this point. Uh, moving on to soybeans, um, you know, again, long time ago, the message was that if we got through 13, that we would see this market get very excited. Uh, this has not disappointed. Uh, once we did get through 13, we had several strong days in a row. And uh, what's really interesting about this whole move between our lows that we had, and, and this is in mid-December, uh, this whole way up, we may not have made a higher high every day, but we had at least a higher low every single day. Uh, we talked about last week this little bit of a doji, and when we did take out the previous day's low, uh, we did it and we tried to recover. And then the very next day, uh, we had a really negative day. 
Um, let's zoom in on this a little bit so we can kind of focus on what we're doing here in the short term. So this was the uptrend from those mid-December lows, and uh, we had closed below it the day that we had that, that large 30 cent lower day. Um, here was another signal here, um, and this was another doji, so kind of opposite of, of what we did uh, up at this peak. We had a, a doji near the lows where we had opened and closed at the same price. So doji marked a high, uh, doji marked a low there. And once we took out this day's high, which uh, that high was 1348 and a half, um, you know, we did see some some strong buying come right back in. Now, interesting, the low that we had this morning um, was right at that uptrend. Uh, so we're we're still now that we closed above it yesterday, we're still respecting this. Um, this might be an area here to be careful. Um, zooming back out and. Let me reiterate a, a point here of what has held corn so far. Uh, that's the July monthly high. So when we look at soybeans, uh, oops, let's change that to the beans. We had two peaks that was made in July. One was at 1398 and the other was at 1399 and a half. So when we take a look at today's high of 1399, we are right back up to these July monthly highs. So uh, part of me wonders in the same respect as corn, if the soybean market doesn't start to stall out after hitting these July monthly highs and testing them. Uh, I think that uh, if we do uh, take out today's low uh, and get back below 1380, we're probably going to dip right back down to the 10 day moving average in this uptrend, which is going to be about another 20 cents lower in the 1360 ish area. Um, if we do end up taking out 1360, and taking out the low uh, from this day's large day of buying, I think you're going to see some additional weakness. So, uh, and, and, and I would say that th this big 30 cent down day, uh, when we took out this day's high as 70, what did we do? We, we really shot through that and saw some aggressive buying. And, and this trend line was at 1370 at the same time. So if we end up taking out this uh, 34 cent higher day's low, uh, then I think you're going to see some additional weakness and, and most likely go back down and recheck, recheck that 1335-ish area. Um, this is a tough market to trade right now. I mean, we're seeing very large moves in, in a very short period of time, uh, so some, some rather, uh, rather strong volatility. Uh, I think this is a market where you, if, you, if you hate using stops, you may just want to use them anyway. I know it's kind of darned if you do, darned if you don't on those things, but um, using a stop may help prevent you from uh, from experiencing some some drastic losses in these markets. Uh, now, if we can get through the fourteen dollar area uh, and again get through these these July highs, um, then it looks to me like there's really not much to stop you. Uh, you know, you've got this May monthly high of fourteen sixteen and a half, and then you've got the contract high of fourteen forty five and a half. Uh, if I draw the line across these highs, uh, that's going to come in, zoom back in here, uh, that looks like it's going to come in uh, just under 1420, um, and so that might line up with those 14, 16 and a half highs that we had in May. Now, I do want to point out on the, uh, we, and we talked about this on the weekly continuous, um, we've got the uh, the gap that was made, and that was at 1394 and three quarters. Uh, much like corn, we are in this uh, upward trending channel and we are at the uh, upper end of this channel. So I think, again, I think this does warrant uh, being careful if you are on the long side of the market right now, but uh, I, I would find it difficult to think that we're gonna come this close to this gap and not fill it. Um, you know, that would be still basis the January contract at this point. So about another dime higher. And, uh, you know, if we were to ride higher into next week, um, into the report next week, that would likely fill that gap. Now, looking at this on a continuous but on a daily basis on a front month, um, the, the gap looks a little bit different. It's actually at 1408 and three quarters. And um, this is a period here where we had uh, kind of this, this flat line above the market. And, and when we got through that, you can see we had a, a very good round of strength that was getting above 1290 on a, on a front month basis. Um, and so that was achieved when January took out 1290 and March took out 13. Uh, now, I would 
wonder here, and let's figure this out with you guys. Uh, if we were to say, hey, let's take this measurement from this high to this, or this low to this high, and um, and see what maybe the projection of that measurement would suggest would be the the upside target for this particular move. Uh, let's go ahead and snap all of these to the right spot. Um, so that looks like you're essentially looking at uh, 1406 and a half uh, would be the 100% projection uh, of the distance from the fall low uh, projected through the November high. Um, and that would come in very close to filling this gap. Uh, now, we also have to remember that the January contract is not going to be on the board for much longer. Uh, that'll expire next week. And then at that point, the March contract will be the front month on the continuous chart. Uh, so somewhere in this 1394 and three quarter to, to 1408 and three quarter, I think you're going to start seeing some interesting gap fills, uh, whether it's on the, the weekly continuous or the daily continuous. Uh, and that would also line up with the measurement and the 100% projection of that move. Uh, now in the short term, and this might be another uh, reason to consider having some stops below today's lows. We've got this 200 day moving average and this is on a continuous basis. So when you look at the highs that we had right at the end of December, we went up and hit the 200 day and, and that uh, really spurred this that, that aggressive move down. Um, this is the 10 day moving average and we've talked about that before how uh, when the funds are trading a trending market, they will typically defend that 10 day. Um, and so for the for multiple reasons, I think if you take out the low from yesterday, you're also taking out the 10 day moving average. Uh, but even in the short term, um, you know, maintaining some stops below today's lows. Uh, if we do see today's lows given, now we're right back below this 200 day moving average. So uh, and, and again, that would probably lead us another 20 cents lower to recheck that 10 day moving average. Uh, so I, I think this is going to be one of those markets where we're going to continue to see 20, 30, 40 cent moves happen uh, frequently and, and very quickly. Um, and so just try to keep yourself from getting over positioned. And uh, uh, again, my, my message would be to use some stops and, and make sure that you don't experience any large losses in this market. Uh, but for right now, as if we continue to build a base and continue to hold support above this 200 day, uh, that should also bring in some additional technical buying to potentially fill these gaps. Um, let's take a look at the new crop here real quick. Uh, we'll look at corn. Uh, we did a, a very brief uh, look at this particular chart on the Monday meeting last week, and, and we had done that after we had released a uh, recommendation to add to your new crop uh, hedges slash sales to get to 30% of, of the new crop production. Um, on that, uh, let's just keep an eye on uh, a couple things here. Uh, one thing that we talked about is the potential that we could have a bit of a head and shoulder pattern. And uh, on the uh, on, on the new crop corn, that neckline, of that pattern would come in right along this uptrend. And this is gonna be the uptrend from the low made on the March 31st quarterly stock report and planting intentions last year. Uh, so it's a very nice steady uptrend. Uh, you could see that if we end up taking out the low that was made on Monday, and that was at 542 and a half, um, we're gonna be taking out this uptrend. Uh, we're gonna be taking out the neckline of that pattern. And so um, that was why we had suggested if we want to use some options to uh, to protect new crop corn, we really should be focused on the 540 strike price as far as the put that we're buying. Uh, now, in the short term, in order for this maybe to be negated as far as the possibility of this, uh, I would suggest we're going to have to take out the 560 area. Uh, that would take out what at this point would look like the right shoulder. So you've got this right shoulder at 559 and a quarter. Your left shoulder would be 558. So uh, again, to verify this pattern, you got to take out the neckline. Um, and so taking out 540 would look very negative for this particular chart. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, um, you know, if you're trying to trade this contract, I think looking at this downtrend, it's going to come in around the 57, 58 area. 
Uh, yesterday's high was 56 and a quarter. So, uh, you know, being a seller somewhere in this vicinity, risking above this 59 and a quarter uh, high wouldn't be the worst thing. If we do take that out, you're also taking out the short-term downtrend, and you might see it pop right back up to these contract highs. Um, but I, I really do not want to see this market sub 540 for numerous reasons, whether it's the neckline, the uptrend. Um, and I think if you're trying to be patient with new crop marketing, uh, I think you'd would definitely want to take some action if, if we do see the other side of 540. Uh, again, maybe that's driven by the data that comes out on the uh, on the report next week. Looking at new crop soybeans, uh, this market was really trading in this this sideways range for a very long time. Um, this was June uh, is when we made this kind of set of lows late June. Uh, then we made these highs. Also in late June, just a few days later, about a week later, and uh, we've been inside of this trading range ever since then. And uh, this most recent uh, uh, string of buying has taken us through uh, what would be kind of this this flat uh, uh, overhead channel from the highs made on June 30th to the highs that were made on August 25th. So we butted up against them uh, for several sessions uh, as we were closing out the year. Um, and then in early, uh, right at the beginning of 2022, what did we do? We, we closed right above that. So let's zoom in here. Uh, closed right above it. The next day we went down and we hit it and uh, had a very strong day yesterday and uh, some new highs made today. So as of right now, you know, we've, we have taken out uh, what I would consider the resistance from this whole uh, sideways trading range. And uh, so at this point, um, I think if, if I am looking at, uh, you know, what would be a signal to come in and, and sell weakness on this, this bean for next year, um, I would say that we have to get back below 1280. Uh, so if this market takes out 1280, we're going to be taking out yesterday's lows. Uh, that would be taking out this 10-day moving average, and we talked about that on the previous bean chart. You can see how we held the 10-day two days in a row right here before we sprung through that resistance level. Um, in the absence of that, we have to be cognizant that the uh, the contract high is at 13, 13 and three quarters, and that's going to be some very significant resistance, about a dime above the market. Um, now, should we start making new contract highs, um, then this market could see some additional technical buying on that front as well. But um, let's keep in mind that in order for us to go up a dime on new crop beans, we likely need to go up um, uh, a little more than a dime on the front month. Uh, just typically we see the front month lead and the spreads have been you know, buying of the front and less aggressive buying of, of the deferred contracts. So if we do see a test of, of the contract highs on this NOV 22, uh, another dime higher, that would likely get us back up to some of those upside targets we had talked about on the march uh, of, of of filling the uh, the weekly and daily continuous chart gaps um, and so I, I think if you are uh, a producer and uh, you have some some risk to lay off uh, this is an area where we really should be considering whether or not you should be looking at some puts to uh, provide some downside protection as we approach contract highs there uh, let's take a look at uh, the wheat. The sweet market has been under some significant pressure. Um, we are at uh, a, a very important level right now. Uh, we had some lows that were made on the March uh, Kansas City wheat at, uh, during the month of November. Um, your uh, November 1st low is 783. Then we came down and made a, a low. This is the low for the month. Uh, at 779, uh, we rallied. We came back down here in, in mid-December. We had a 781 and 81 and three-quarter low. We rallied, and here today we made a low of 782 and three-quarters, and we did close a, a little bit off of those lows. Uh, I think this is a, an extremely important level on this chart uh, at the 780 level. Uh, right now, uh, I think you could you could take a stab at buying it. Um, I would I would keep some stops likely somewhere uh, under this 100-day moving average. Um, I know that uh, if we do end up taking out this 780 area, and you look at at these previous highs of 776 and three quarters, uh, that'll line right up with this 100-day. So 
um, this this general vicinity um, should be some very good support on this particular contract. But if we do see the market sub the 100 day, uh, then we might just need to come back down and revisit uh, this kind of overhead channel line that we broke through. Uh, that'll work itself down into the low sevens where this 200 day moving average is. So uh, I, I would be concerned if, if this market did breach the the uh, 780 area and close below the 100 day. Uh, for right now, we're at support. So if you're a believer in uh, this market being too cheap based on the drop in, in crop conditions in Oklahoma and on and, uh, and Kansas, um, and the fact that we just continue to be extremely dry in those growing regions, uh, this may be an area to to look at uh, at this market from the long side. But again, technically, if we do breach this area and close below it, I, I think you've got some some potential further losses to come yet. Uh, we are oversold. That doesn't mean we need to turn right around, but that's also part of the uh, the component that would lead me to believe that uh, this may be a decent area to take a stab at the long side in one way, shape, or form. Um, now. We had talked about a, a trade in the uh, corn a couple days ago, and that was looking at using a February call uh, to provide length and then selling a March call up, up at contract highs to help pay for that. Uh, really looking at that as a report play, saying, all right, well, either the report's bullish or it's not. If the report is bullish, uh, then we're likely to see some sharp gains on the contract. And I think that type of a, a trade would also be a good way to, t to, uh, to take a look at this Kansas City wheat market. Um, you look at the, uh, the highs, you know, these open and, and closing prices over the last several days have been uh, right around, you know, what was this, 805, uh, 804, and opening here of 805 and a quarter. Um, yeah, so what I would maybe consider is something similar on, on the KC wheat as a way to take a stab at, at a, a potential bottom here. Um, you could take a look at uh, buying uh, maybe a, a near the money, a, a 790 call, um, and uh, that settled today at uh, 17 and a quarter. And then maybe looking at the March options, um, go up, up here to the 850 area and uh, you know do something in, in, in that vein uh, that closed at about six and one eighth of a cent. So you would have an, an at the money call. Uh, for six cents. So if this market did get back over eight, uh, I think you might just get right back up towards this downtrend, and, and that downtrend is going to come in uh, over the next couple of weeks uh, in the upper 850s. So being able to have an at-the-money call um, and have that against the, a sold call up at up essentially where that downtrend would come in, I think that's a cheap way to to potentially try and pick a bottom on this thing. And if this really falls apart and we end up, you know, dropping and going into the low sevens, uh, then likely you're you're going to be able to buy back that 850 sold call in the March, um, you know, on on the break to lower values, and uh, uh, just have a, a, a minimized risk on that type of a position. Uh, if the market does break down uh, and the February call expires worthless, which is the one that you would be buying. Your, your loss on the position would be your initial cost of the position, which is six cents, plus whatever you would buy back that 850 sold call for. So, uh, you know, if we do go down around 720, uh, let's just take a look at that. Your, that 850 call would be at that point a uh, buck 20 out of the money, and uh, I'm sorry, a dollar 30 out of the money. Uh, you know, that's effectively like a, uh, a 920 call right now. Um, and that's going for about three and seven eighths of a cent. Uh, you take some time value out of it, and, and you're likely to buy that option back for a penny or two. You know, really keeping your risk down to uh, maybe seven or eight cents total on the position, which I think is a, a pre pretty reasonable way to go about it if you don't want to use futures and use a stop. Um, let's take a look at livestock real quick. Uh, we've been talking about this June uh, hog. We did make another new contract high today, closed in the new contract highs. Uh, that settled at 99.40 with a 99.65 high. Uh, yesterday, you know, was it kind of spooked us a little bit. We had some negative trade. We had talked about, you know, keeping a stop uh, below this low right here at 97, and we went to 97.02 on the low yesterday. Very, very close to, to potentially stopping us out. But again, it held uh, kind of where it should at that neckline. Uh, we ended up having an outside day higher. We had some follow-through gains today. And it looks like if we zoom in, 
uh, we did close just above this kind of overhead channel line. So uh, if this market's going to be good, uh, you know, right away tomorrow, I would suspect that maybe if it tips back a little bit, we see some support in the low 99s. Uh, but again, the measurement of this pattern still suggests we get up around 102. So still looking for, you know, roughly another two and a half bucks to go to the upside before we hit the objective of the head and shoulder bottom here. And again, this is left shoulder, right shoulder, head, and then the neckline right there. Um, let's look at feeders. Feeders, um, we took out the uh, the downtrend from the uh, the contract high, uh, saw a couple days of buying, and then yesterday uh, we gapped lower. We kind of opened right at that downtrend line, saw a lot of selling. Um, so we've got, I think, some targets below the market and above the market. Obviously, above the market would be to go back and fill this gap, and, and that'll likely happen at some point. Uh, I do think if you take out uh, the lows from today and yesterday, which today was an inside bar. So if we do see some additional weakness tomorrow and we get through these sets of lows, I think you're just going to come right to this uptrend line. Uh, that's going to be at the uh, the 100 day moving average. So I would say roughly 163 ish is your your target on the downside on the um, on the uh, March feeders. Um, if you get here, this may be an area to exit shorts. Uh, you know, see if this 100 day holds. Uh, if, you, if you're taking a long stance to this market, uh, around around 163 at this uptrend, you, you likely need to play some stops below this uh, December low, which is going to be 159.90. So you're going to have to risk, you know, a little over three bucks on that position uh, in order to, to take out these December lows and, and tell you that you're potentially wrong. Um, now on the upside here, if, if we did buy here um, or just exited shorts. Uh, you know, upside target would be to go up and fill this gap, and that would be at 169.22, and that would line really back up with some of these previous highs at 169. So I, I do think, uh, you know, if we end up buying at 163, uh, or at least getting out of shorts, uh, going back up to 169 would be your objective on that type of move. Um, on the April contract, uh, very similar. You know, we had taken out the downtrend. Uh, we did gap higher through uh, or gap lower yesterday, uh, right back over this. So same thing, 100 days is going to be down around that 65.50 area. And um, I think you'll see a little bit of minor support in this vicinity around 67 and a quarter with these lows that were made in, in late November. Um, then we had another set of lows here in early December right at that level. So uh, this area is kind of your no next objective at, at, at uh, uh, 67 and a uh, quarter on, on the April contract. And then ultimately, if we break through there, uh, a test of this uptrend in the 100 day. And, and very much the same, if, if we get here and, and you want to exit shorts or, or be a buyer, you're going to be placing stops below this December low. Uh, and your objective is going to be to go back up and, and look at this gap at uh, nearly the 172.50, 172.47 to be exact. Uh, this previous high was 172.20. So uh, somewhere back up around 172 uh, would be your upside objective if you ended up looking for uh, a long position on, on a move to, to uh, uh, this uptrend in this 100-day moving average. Um, is there any other market anybody wants me to look at before I uh, shut it down uh, today? Brian, this is this is Bill. Could you could you take a look at the wheat? Or I mean, I'm sorry, the meal the meal. So meal. All right. So meal. Um, I don't have anything drawn on this chart and. Uh, we can take a fresh look at it. 10-day um, moving average would be the first thing that sticks out to me. So much like the soybeans, the meal went and tested the 10-day moving average a couple days. Uh, we held it and saw some aggressive buying off of it. Uh, we did come right back up and recheck the high from last week. We've kind of jabbed through it a little bit, but we really haven't been able to uh, to, to close handily above this. Um, I might want to take a look at this. Um, here let's just draw the uptrend here see what that looks like so it looks like the uptrend is going to come in uh, you can't really see the 10 day here because it's going to blend with this uptrend line right now uh, so that would suggest that uh, you know as we uh, if we do retest this uptrend line, we should have an, an additional layer of support because of the 10-day moving average. Uh, but uh, again, 
And if we end up taking out this uptrend and then closing below the 10 day, that might be the first signal that this market uh, is ready to, to see some profit taking and, and see some additional pressure to the downside. Um, let's take a look at this on a, on a continuous basis. I'm just curious to see uh, what that would look like here. Um, so let me just draw the downtrend here. So it looks like last week the market uh, failed at the downtrend, pulled back and, and closed off the highs. And uh, this week uh, we've gone right back up and we've taken out this downtrend and now we're above it. So um, as far as this goes, it looks like you could see some additional upside if we can maintain strength above uh, this trend line. So I would say that as long as the uh, the spot meal is is holding about 4.15. Um, that this looks technically intact. Um, kind of the same deal here from these December lows. Each week has had uh, a higher high and a higher low. So that might be the first signal to uh, some weakness is taking out a previous week's low. And um, something to be mindful of there is that uh, on the meal. We do have the uh, the January contract trading at about an eleven dollar premium to the March, um, and so this March contract is trading below the uh, lows from the uh, lows for the week for January. So once January leaves the board and March becomes the front month, uh, unless it really gets some additional strength here in the short term it's going to already be below last week's lows. So this would be something to really keep an eye on, I think, on the March contract. If we can't get some footing above, uh, what is this, 416.7, and look at the high that we made today at 416.5, if we can't get some footing above this area on the March contract by the time the, the January expires, uh, that might suggest that the January contract made the high. And uh, now next week, uh, when January leaves the board, uh, if the March contract is sub 416.7, uh, now we're trading below the previous week's low, and that would be a, a, a potential uh, I, uh, suggestion that the market is is making a short-term high here. Uh, so I, I would say if you've got meal length right now, uh, really focused on where this March contract is when when January leaves the board, and uh, we may really need to see this uh, this. March contract get through today's highs and stay above today's highs into next week in order to feel like we're not making some kind of a short-term high on the meal. Um, looking at it, um, let's just look at it on a very big picture perspective on a, a monthly continuous here. So same deal, uh, we did take out this downtrend, so let's snap that to that. And uh, I think that just reinforces it. Again, if we're below this week's lows, when March takes over, we're back below this downtrend line after kind of jabbing through it as the January contract expired. So uh, I, I think right now, again, Meal needs to maintain these gains and put some further gains on in the March contract in order to feel like we're not maybe making a short-term high once January leaves the board. So that's my thought there, Bill. Thanks. Okay, are there any other questions for Brian? If not, we will wrap up today's discussion. Um, if there are any questions, please call any of the Ag Market team members at 844-424-6758. We will be at, we, will, we will be back next Monday with our weekly meeting, uh, kind of give our kind of guesses, projections, uh, estimates of what's going to happen on uh, the next WASD report, which is released a uh, week from today. Also, if anybody's interested in coming to one of our two conferences, one in Indianapolis and one in Kansas City, please go to agmarket.net to find out more information. With that, have a good week of trading. Oh, one final note, the risk of loss of trading futures and or options is substantial and each investor and or trader must consider whether this is a suitable investment. Thank you and have a good day.